Welcome to Paranormal Central, broadcasting live from Central California with your hosts Jeffrey Gonzalez and Alan Thomas. Broadcasting video worldwide at ParanormalCentral.net and broadcasting audio on the Dark Matter Network at ArtBell.com. Are you ready to witness something that you cannot explain? Hello everyone, welcome back to Paranormal Central. I am your host, Jeffrey Gonzalez. Thank you for showing up once again. To my right, to your left, co-host, Mr. Alan Thomas. Good evening, everyone. Well, we are, and as you can see, I am not um, uh, saying hi to Emerald because she's not here. She went up camping, and uh, she said that uh, she was abducted by Bigfoot. So uh, I don't know if we're going to be seeing her anytime soon. So we are manning the board from our end. So if we goof up tonight, we are sorry because <laughs> we got a lot on our hands tonight. I want to thank you for showing up tonight. My name is Jeffrey Gonzalez, and you are watching us at ParanormalCentral.net. Or you are either listening to us on the Dark Matter Network at ArtBell.com. Yes, I said ArtBell.com. And uh, we're going to be talking about everything like we always do. We're not just a show where we talk about one subject. Boring. No, we do it all here. We talk about, you know, any paranormal subject you can imagine. And if it's cool and if it's recent then we will talk about it because we're on top of things here uh we're not like talking about the missing malaysian plane um and i know keith <laughs> is tired of that <laughs> from other shows so um you know it's missing so not, let's just let them find it now huh you know if, if i got a feeling it's going to show up sooner or later but hey so all right um we are going to be talking. You know, I, I have to apologize. I uh, We were going to have a cool guest on tonight, but she came down with laryngitis. And uh, she, her name is Tammy Thomas. And you probably saw her if you saw the episode we were in called Monsters and Mysteries. Uh, she was the one with the evil gnome in her yard. She came down with laryngitis. And she lost her voice completely. So she cannot come on and talk with us tonight on the phone, which is a bummer. So hopefully she will he be here next Sunday, and we will have her on and um, and uh, and get her on here and talk about her experience because it wasn't just her; it was her and her grandson uh, that actually saw this thing, and it was in Porterville, California, which is south of Fresno, and uh, kind of weird because you know it's just not Bigfoot. As far as creatures that we have here, we also have evil gnomes and Mothman, and and I'm betting my life that it's happening all over the place. But the reason why we are able to talk about it here is because people are coming forward, and they're not embarrassed anymore, and that's kind of cool because that's kind of the atmosphere we're trying to give here. Is if you have a story, let me hear about it. Don't be embarrassed. I want to know about it. And you know what? We're getting calls now from all over the world on the East Coast and other countries. Um, they're actually going and Googling um, hotline, paranormal hotline, and our hotline is coming up. And they're calling in, and um, I'm getting some cool cases, cool information from all over the world. 
and it's kind of blown us away <laughs> because uh, they're not expecting somebody live to answer the phone. And I do answer the phone. And uh, one ex one situation happened yesterday. Long story short, uh, she was experiencing some stuff, and you know I talked to her through it, and we were on the phone for about an hour. And it, it's kind of cool when you when you can help somebody on the other side of the United States, and it's you know it makes them feel really good, and it makes me feel real good. So, all right, now what we're gonna do is we at the beginning of the show. We have two reporters come on, Ken and Danny. Ken talked about recent UFO sightings all over the world, and Danny talked about one of the favorite subjects, Bigfoot. So right now what we're going to do is we're going to call Ken. Now, I have to do the dialing because um, Emerald's not here. So I'm going to do it. So bear with me. And uh, I'm going to make the phone call here. Da -da 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 like I'm monitoring two computers tonight. <laughs> It's going to be a lot of fun. I'm not in chat, but I'll be working to get in chat. Lots of stuff happening this week. Can't, can't wait to hear about Danny. He's got good stuff. Yeah. And there he is. Hello. Hey, hello, Ken. It's Jeff. Hi, Ken. Hey, hey, pal. How you doing? Good, Real man. Good. good. Hey, Alan. We got uh, Emerald is not with us. She's camping, and uh, so I'm gonna be. I got you. Obviously, I called you, and that's why you're hearing me first. So we're gonna get right to it, Ken. I'm gonna put up number one picture, and uh, I would say go for it, man. What do we got here? Okay, uh, yeah, I sent you some pretty uh, pretty cool shots this week. Uh, we have one here. Uh, this was March 29, 2014, uh, a couple weeks ago, and this was Universal City, Texas. A uh, brief statement was uh, it was close to 9 p.m. and we were driving and had just left our street and were stopped at a stop sign about to turn left onto Collinswood Avenue when I looked right and saw these glowing orbs rising into view coming from the southeast. I explained, exclaimed to my husband, look, what is that? He said, Jesus, what is it? <laughs> we, point, we pointed the car in their direction and after a few seconds of watching these lights, I told my husband to turn off the car and I stepped out to look at, to look and listen. Uh, there was no noise. The objects were passing over our heads. Uh, they would fade, and as some of them would turn to gray, then speed up, streaking past the slower moving orange ones. Well, that's basically telling me right there that there can't be Chinese lanterns if these things are streaking, um, you know, past the uh, slower moving ones. But uh, continuing, the first wave of these orbs were the largest. I believe the plane came into view on the second wave to the left of the orbs, and it followed them, staying off to the left. There were three waves in total. They floated silently over our heads, fading out, and at least three of them sped past the others while turning gray. So that's the photo we got there, and, and uh, quite frankly, this was a Mufine case file, I believe, and I believe Mufine wrote these things off as Chinese lanterns. <laughs> oh, no oh are you like kidding me? Come on. <laughs> Uh, yeah. hey. Why, Ken? Why? Now, who? who? Uh, I don't know. Oh. That that scares me. That's oh. very that's very scary. Uh, that's it's you know, actually the, the, pretty cool. The bad cool. part is a, a lot of the investigators. They guess. You know, if 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 they can't, you know, if they have no idea, they start guessing. Well, I guess it's Chinese lanterns, or I guess it was, uh, you know, fireflies in the sky. You know, I'm guessing this. I'm guessing that. And it's and all they're doing is guessing. They're not. They're not asking the right questions to the witnesses. Exactly. They're not. They're so not. I, I quite frankly, I, it, it scares me that that they are, they're still doing this, but. It is what it is, and hopefully we can weed out some of yeah. these uh, debunkers and, and other people that are not qualified to, to be an investigators, and hopefully someday um, you find might, uh, might, might be the best. Have, have you found that it seems like everybody wants to be the debunker and skeptic, and they really don't even know what they're doing? You know, they just throw stuff out there and hope it sticks? I mean, yeah, it I think seems that like may everybody. be the case. Uh, I think p some people may have their own agenda. Some of them may be working for the government. Uh -huh. uh, some of them are just ignorant and really <laughs> don't want to believe. They don't want to believe the fact that, uh, you know, these flying saucers and spacemen and alien craft are visiting our Earth. They, they just, they're just putting, they just try to put it out of, out of their mind. Right. 
and, and so you know nothing could ever be a UFO to them and and uh, you know I, I think we have some investigators of MUFON who who you know have that uh, men, that mentality that uh, these things can't be alien craft because alien crafts don't exist then what the hell are they doing there that just oh, okay never mind I don't I mean we can we can we can go on I, I don't want to I don't want to because I don't want I don't want to get you in trouble okay so yeah no I, I'm, I'm getting odd just thinking about it right now so <laughs> all okay. right uh, uh, let's go on to picture two uh, and three all these, right these were, this is cool beautiful incredible. this is cool what the hell am I looking at here that's yeah, amazing. that's really weird. That was January twenty eighth, uh, two thousand fourteen, Bakersfield, California. What? Yeah, that's uh, Bakersfield. A brief statement is in the past I have been a helicopter pilot and have observed many planes and helicopters during nighttime flight. Just before two a.m., I noticed an object that caught my attention as something strange, neither a plane nor a helicopter moving at high speed. I then took pictures and asked uh, a friend when he came over moments later that I had I had seen it. I've never been waiting. I have been waiting my whole life to become a believer, uh, and with concrete evidence. So uh, that was the brief statement that it, he uh, gave wow. with the the case file, and and uh, they are some incredible. Uh, of course, you know, of the light is because of the, the show uh, slow shutter speed on the camera, but. Still, it must have been. Um, it must I have, have no idea what these things. Were yeah, doing. that that must have been moving pretty quick. I'm thinking. I think so. Wow, that is a very cold shot. I yeah, uh, you know what? Um, it's a UFO, right? An unidentified flying object. Flying object. That's right. Exactly. You know. All right. Cool deal. Uh, you know, I, I I usually take it to the next step, and you know, if these debunkers want to play their game, then I'll play my game and say it's an alien craft. <laughs> <laughs> that one looks like it. <laughs> All right. It's upset, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I bet. All right, number three. Now, uh, this is cool. I've. Uh... Oh, yeah, that would be picture four, uh, September 3rd, 2001, Hoboken, New Jersey. Okay, wait, 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 wait. I got number three up now. Is that okay, okay, it, it, yeah. well, three, two and three are, are, are together. together. Okay, That's now. Bakersfield, uh, California. All right. Uh, both of them. Oh. Photos uh, came with the uh, Bakerfield uh, January 26, 2014. Okay, but so, now, all right, now, but. Yeah, both, both of them photos are just incredible. I, but I'm looking now at, at photograph number three, and the light configuration is totally from number two. It, it's different. Um, uh, yeah, I don't know if it's, if it's a side profile or I'm not really sure, or possibly it, it could be a, another craft that uh, maybe the, the uh, witness didn't realize that you know it was there that he captured it with his camera. I've, but, uh, I've had uh, I've had different cases where I've had photographs, and what I'm looking at right here is the back end of the actual craft, and that's the actual engines or whatever the um, you know it's light. It, I'm, I'm thinking in the dark to the right of this picture is the rest of the crap, but we just don't see it because it's nighttime. Exactly. That's what I'm thinking. That's very yeah, cool. That's right. We, we could possibly just be seeing uh, some kind of a light or um, the, the some kind part. of a uh, thrusters uh, emissions right. from some kind of an engine. Exactly. On, on the I don't know. I, right. I really don't. Very cool. All right. Let's go to number yeah. three. All right. We got okay, number three. Okay. Number four. Yeah. Number four. Yeah, I'm, I'm investigating this case, as oh. a matter of fact. This one goes back to uh, a, a couple of weeks before the World Trade Center's uh, uh, crisis we had there in uh, Manhattan. But this was September 3rd, 2001, Hoboken, New Jersey, and the guy was looking across the river. As a matter of fact, this really should have been a New York case, but they gave it to me. A brief uh, statement is, I am a crane operator in New Jersey. My partner and I just started the 250-ton American crane, and we were talking by the cab standing on a catwalk. I noticed a bright moving straight up the... I, I noticed a light moving straight up the Hudson River going north. I said to my partner, look at that plane. It's moving really fast. We both looked in amazement as the object got closer at an incredible speed. It was huge, and it was losing parts or something. It was definitely burning. As it passed over the World Trade Center, it left a puffy cloud. From our point of view, it was directly over the towers. As it passed us, I remember that I had a camera. It was a low-resolution digital camera. After I snapped the picture, the object split perfectly into three parts. It went straight 
and one went to the right and the other went to the left in perfect uh, synchronization as all three descended. My son was working a few blocks away, and he and some others saw it as well, but not the split. We were uh, we were where we, we had the advantage because we were right by the river. Uh, later that day, there was a report on a radio that this object was seen as far as South Carolina, and they said it was an old Russian spaceship. To this day, I don't believe the story. It was never mentioned again on any news, television, or newspaper. It was big, and you can hear it roaring as it went by us. On the left of the photo, in the edge of the uh, on the left of the photo is the edge of the boom of the crane. It had to be about 75 yards away. It says 75 miles. That's a typo. It's the 75 yards away or more when it passed us when I took this picture. Again, it was it was big. So that's the uh, hmm. that's what he captured uh, with his uh, low definition camera. And uh, I had to enhance it a little bit. But uh, as a matter of fact, I have a few pictures on my uh, main website, World UFO Photos, uh, where there were some strange triangular type objects uh, right there at the World Trade Centers uh, when they were on fire. So, really? you know, I don't know if, if this had anything to do with these aliens know what's happening in the future or something like that. You know, it, it seems to me that uh, these aliens, uh, these crafts seem to appear before major events, earthquakes, um, you know. Tsunamis. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. You know, crazy things like that. That they seem to get a more of an influx of these UFO sightings, and I don't know if it's all connected, but it's uh, certainly pretty strange. Wow, um, I'm going to have to go take a look at those triangle crafts you're talking about. Um, send me a link if you can later on. Okay, I want to see those. Uh, yeah, you yeah, know, I had them. Uh, I had someone send them to me on on the, my to my website and. And said, I don't know if you have the guts to do it, but uh, this is what I captured on my camera, and, and you, you know, I'm hoping you put them on your website. And I did, you know. Wow. Because I thought they were uh, they were pretty incredible. Uh, I'll send them to you. Okay. As a matter I'll, of fact, maybe I can talk about them next week if you want. Absolutely. Let's do that. Don't send them to me. I'll, I'm I'm going to wait to next week to see them. Okay. Yeah. Great. Awesome. Okay. All right. Right on. Uh, number five. Yeah. There's three photos here, and. Uh, on the three photos, uh, I'm looking at the Art Bell uh, site right now, and, and the reason why I sent three photos is you can actually see this thing moving through the sky. Oh. Uh, this is a gentleman. His name is Don McLeod. He's from uh, Florida, and he has sent me some just incredible photos. He's a sky watcher, a ufologist. As a matter of fact, he's a, uh, a researcher for me. Uh, I have a few researchers out there all over the world that send me uh uh, special photos that they had or have taken uh, experiences and everything else, and of course I include them too on my websites. But uh, a brief statement is greetings from this was Indian Lake Estates, Florida, on March 29th uh, last week. Uh, that uh, 3:29:14. This was taken late that day during the rain. Uh, possible rod. Uh, use it if you want. Um, note black dot to the right of saucer. Shaped TV, TV antenna. It's a bird, Don, Don McLean, McLeod. Uh, that's the third picture down there. You can see a, 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 a light post or something that looks like there's a, a, a saucer type object on there, and, and that's some kind of an antenna, I guess. And there's a little dot to the right of that. See, he, he said that's a bird, but uh, he has sent me some incredible uh, photos. I'm, I can't tell if this is a rod or, or just a, a thin. Uh, flying saucer flying by. But, now, uh, he, he sends me some great stuff. Now, what's kind of odd that you brought this up and the date uh, is very close to a photograph that I just received about two days ago and I haven't made it public yet and I haven't, I haven't even sent it to you either because yeah. I'm waiting until the person uh, gets on the phone with me. And okay. on uh, it happened in Jacksonville, Florida on uh, I want to say April right around the beginning of April the the uh, uh, Baptist um, Community Hospital there was doctors and nurses on the sixth floor and they were looking out the window and this 
and I'm going to say what, what I was looking at, because I have the photograph in my hands, is a mothership coming out of the clouds, just as, like you would see in Independence Day when they're finally relieving themselves and they're coming out, oh, right? Oh, wow. This thing is huge, and what happened is everybody started taking photographs. And like, and he mentioned that when he told, because it, it came like from a third source, like the friend of, of, a, of a mother and the mother contacted me and blah, blah, blah. Um, yeah. But uh, the guy is scared because he actually called and, 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 and from what they're telling me was a radio station and the DJ told him to leave it alone and to, just to drop it and hung up the phone. Um, okay. And but it's what's weird though is that this it, it, to me it looks like a mothership because it's about the size of a small city, and and it's freaking me out because now the, now, now where, where was this? This is in Jacksonville, Florida. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Yeah, I haven't uh, I don't have any so I haven't heard anything about that one yet. Yeah, it, it's it, again it's yeah. the only reason why I know about it is because. Somebody of somebody of somebody who's a friend on Facebook said, you know what, you need to give this photograph to Jeff. And the guy was scared to do it, but he did it anyways. Um, yeah. And right now, I'm and, 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 and we'll talk about it later, but I haven't made it public yet until I actually speak to him in person. And I'm trying to get him on the show. Uh, but I will okay. let you know what's going on with that one, and I will send it to you because this is going to blow you out of the water. <laughs> yeah, send it to me, and uh, I'd need a date and location. And what I'll do is I'll give your uh, I'll give you credit for the photo. That's what I usually oh, I don't do. Care. I, I don't care. I, I, yeah, I don't care about that. It just it just um, I'm I'm I, I before I release it, I want to make sure that it's the real deal because okay. you know it just it it, it it looks so unbelievable, but it's coming from somebody who's telling me this is it. This is the real deal. And it's um, it it's been put on Facebook a couple times, and it's been removed from Facebook all the time. So okay. I think we have something that's pretty genuine here. And because what you're showing me right now on picture five A, five B, five C, it looks like depending on the size, and I don't know how you know, how big this is, but to me it looks like a large ship, possible mothership, and that's what was given to me right around the same time period. So it's, okay, it's great. kind of weird. Yeah, I'd like so. to see that. Absolutely. No, I'm interested in that. Oh, yeah. No, you, you, you'll get a copy. So, okay. Very cool. All right. Sounds good. All right. Um, your website again is World UFOs. Yeah, worldufophotos.org. And my news website is worldufophotosandnews.org. Uh, yeah, they're coming along real well. All right. On, and we have links on our website at paranormalcentral.net on the reporter's link. If you want to go, you can go there and click. And he has literally thousands and thousands of pictures of very cool stuff that you have never seen before. So and I have them right on the front, right on the main As page. A fact, Just I'm, scroll I'm, down. Right now I'm sitting on a little over 4,000 photos that I haven't even published yet. Wow, <laughs> man. I, mean, I, I, hey, uh, I, I, I don't want to spoil everyone by putting them all on my website at one time. So I try to put uh, maybe uh, three or four on my website every day just right so you well, know, sure. I want people to come back. Sure, absolutely. I would do the same thing. Let, so. let me ask you a question. Um, you know, I get in my Facebook, I get people saying, and they argue, right, uh, there has been an uptick in sightings and reports of UFOs. And then you have the other one saying, no, it's only because there's more cameras, you know, uh, cell phone cameras and stuff like that. It, yeah. What what is 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 there really? Do you think an uptick in them, or is is it really the cell phone camera thing? Yeah, no, I know what you're saying. It's it's really. I'm not really sure. I, I it, well, with with Newfound started their new show, um, you know, Hangar One on Friday nights. Um, uh, you know, we've been getting a lot a lot more cases, and then I hope Newfon is prepared to handle all of these cases that they've been wanting to get. But, uh, you know, like you said, uh, since since everyone has a camera nowadays with their iPhone or whatever, uh, we are getting more photos and, and stories from people. Uh, I really, it's really hard to say whether uh, we have a, you know, whether we're getting more as compared to maybe last year or year or six months ago. It's uh, it's really all depends who you talk to. You know, everyone kind of changes these numbers, and and, and they say that ninety five percent of all UFO cases are man made. But you know, that's that's the stupidest thing that I've ever heard. Uh, mm -hmm. It all depends on on who's putting these figures together. 
personally, me, I would I would say that at least thirty percent of uh, all reported UFO sightings are the real deal. Uh, I'm going to throw a number out there, and I'm going to say about thirty percent, right. as compared to other debunkers who only say five percent. Right, right, and I I agree. There's uh, you know a lot of people now are more aware. They're they're paying attention to their surroundings, especially up. Um, there's more shows coming out, like internet shows and TV shows, and people now have the the word UFO in their brain. So whenever they're looking around and see a light in the sky, they happen to look up, and you know that's why yeah. we're getting. I think we're, we're getting a lot of stuff on film, so that's cool. So, all right, that's Ken. What I, people, if you're not if you're not looking up in the sky, you'll never see a exactly. UFO. Exactly, so. exactly. So, all right, Ken. Thank you very much, and we'll see you next Sunday. Okay. Okay, my friends, Jeff and Alan, thanks again for having me on, and I'll talk to you next Sunday. Sounds good. Good night, brother. Catch you later. Okay, pal. Thank you. Bye. Okay, that was Ken. On uh, He's uh, a, an investigator for MUFON. And, um, yeah, I, so, so what do you think? Do you, you think there's more oh, good question. UFO sightings, or, or, or is it because of there's more cameras? I, I know for a fact they, that they, in our area we were blasted with them yeah and then all of a sudden they dropped off to nothing to nothing and now it seems like they're they're coming back yeah. only now like in the last few months there's groups of them i mean right. like they're seeing 50 in one spot and right. we got several pictures of them like that yeah um i i i uh i i don't know i don't want to give you uh, i i because i don't know i mean you're right there's a lot more sightings occurring now is it because there are they are uh, aware now of, of you know look up go out jogging you look up you're going to sm smoke a cigarette you look up you're going to take the trash out you look up um, I don't know to be honest uh, you know are we being invaded is is the question the million dollar question uh, no I think they've been here for a long time um, I think we're just being more aware now I, I wonder if we should you know we have a team we have these like a couple of different teams. Mm -hmm. I wonder if we should grab somebody that likes to do statistics and, you know, like where this want to believe sign is right here. All right. Maybe we put a United States or world map on it and then have them uh, start putting pins. That's going to be a lot of pins. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it will. <laughs> a lot you of know. pins. Um, yeah. Uh, it's going to be a good, I mean, man, that's, that's a lot of sightings happen every day. And for all those out there who are watching and listening, we have literally hundreds of sightings every day around the world. I mean, we could be here hours and hours and hours talking about this, but we can't. So, yeah. you know, we try to give you just the best of the best, um, unfortunately. The best and the most latest. And the most latest. And uh, I'm glad you mentioned that because that is exactly what we're here, what we're doing this show. Uh, and it's all about the latest recent. All right. Um, and, you know, people are complaining on Facebook. I'm, I'm going to go ahead and talk about MUFON and the Hangar One show. Um, it, it, they're rehashing old crap again. What happened in 1967, 1984, 1979? God, you guys, stop already. What happened last week? You know, in, in seven days ago, six days ago. I'm tired of this old stuff. Leave it alone. Show me some new stuff. Give me some better evidence than you're showing, like, you know, well, we can't talk to him because he doesn't want to talk to us. So, but if we know it happened. You know, how do you know it happened? Oh, yeah. You know, people are – well, okay, I'm going to go on a rant, but I'm not going to do it now. I'm going to wait after Danny because, uh, you know, Alan and I are going to rant this time. But we have some some a real good reason we're going to rant, and it's going to tick some people off who are debunkers, like Ken was saying, and people who don't like what we're doing. I, I don't even think the debunkers know what they're doing. <laughs> yeah, I don't think so either. They're not – they don't research. Their research is right here. On their computer. And, and that's far as they get. Like, they got the toilet right there, the coffee pot right there, and the debunking tool. You know, what they're doing is they're chewing a piece of gum, and then they get the gum out, and they throw it on the wall, and they're hoping it's going to stick. True. That's exactly what they're doing right now to us. All right. Okay. We're going to stop. Danny, let me call Danny. <laughs> let me call Danny. All right. Uh, yeah, I've been waiting for Danny. He has some good stuff. Actually, both of them. Yeah. That's, that was some good UFOs, man. Okay. 
This computer is really slow <laughs> over here. Time for the Squatch Report. By the time we get to the end of the show, I'll be in chat. I guarantee <laughs> it. I'll be able to say, later. <laughs> but only I'm not leaving yet. Uh, Danny. What happened? Oh, Hi, crap. Danny. I called you on the wrong phone, dude. <laughs> <laughs> Why, I'm Hi, right bye. <laughs> See you in a minute. I just hung up on him. He's going, hey, what happened? <laughs> That's funny. All right. Yeah, when Emerald's not here, man, we're juggling. Uh, really need Emerald. <laughs> like, sleep with the Bigfoot already and get over here. <laughs> <laughs> just take some good pictures. Hey, I hung up on you because I called you on the wrong phone. Uh, are you done ranting? Yeah, no. <laughs> <laughs> no, not yet. I haven't even started, dude. <laughs> <laughs> All right. The Squatch Report by Danny Valderrama coming to you live from Kingsburg, California. Ah. That's right. You live in Kingsburg. Shut up. All right. In an undisclosed location in Kingsburg. Building in Kingsburg. Underground in my mom's basement. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to write that down, too. I'm going to talk about that. That's cool. Thank you for bringing that up. Uh. Um, okay. Um, for all those who are watching us on ParanormalCentral.net, I am putting these pictures up as we go. And I sent these also to um, the Art Bell uh, webmaster. And unfortunately, half of them on Danny's side got up and half of them didn't only because the, the link was it was too big of a file. And for some reason, it didn't I take. I tried to shrink it. It still didn't work. Yeah. Uh, well, the first, story, the first story is first story isn't up but uh the okay second, the third story oh, yeah yeah he tried to he tried to do it because he did get them so we'll go ahead and talk about the first story which is uh the the the, the bridge then right the bridge. yeah okay all right i got the bridge up man let's go ahead and talk about it what do we got Oops. okay this is uh 45 miles east of portland oregon this is on the columbia river it's uh cascade locks i can't see the bridge though hold on it's coming up see yeah and it's a uh, it's uh, the Cascade Locks it's okay, called Bridge of the Gods. And there's a there's a big the, time uh, there's a big time um like la you got it now? Yeah, that's the, okay. that's the, called the Bridge of the Gods. It connects uh, Oregon with Washington. That's Columbia River underneath it. And the next picture shows a, a, a mural painted by Larry Kangas All from right. Beaverton, Oregon. Let me go to big completed the, the mural in 2001 of November. In November of 2001. And it's a visual tour through the history of the beautiful area of Oregon, Washington. Hmm. Okay. In this mural that he did, uh -huh. on one of the corners is a picture of Bigfoot. Dun, 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 dun. Uh, on the left-hand side. There it is. I hey. don't know how we found it. I, either we, uh, th these are pictures that I took when we were down there. Oh, you didn't and, see, and uh, you didn't see it? No, I, we knew about it. I think, because we, we found it, or we found it by accident or something. Uh -huh. And the next picture shows the Bayfoot on the corner. All right, right there. And, I, and I definitely have it up now. Uh, that looks like a cougar, unless I'm looking at the wrong thing. Right here. Oh, I see him. Oh, it's Waldo. <laughs> yeah, I see him. And there's a big board next to the, which is the next picture. There's a big board that tells you what you what to look for in the mural there. And it says on there that it's a, a Sasquatch Bigfoot. Appears in Indian oral tradition as well. The artist claims that the Bigfoot drawing is based on an actual sighting that he made from this spot Ooh. while he worked on the mural late Whoa. into the night. <gasps> Very cool. So he didn't plan on putting Bigfoot in there, but I guess he had a sighting and, when and he was painting the mural. What year did he paint the mural? In 2001. Really? November. November of 2001. That is like recent, guys. I mean, that's like, yeah. that's, oh, wow, he saw it. Anyway, that, there. And, you know, we're looking at the bridge. It's it's like, you know, we're not talking the mountains, man. We're talking civilization. There's people around. Um, and he was probably there doing his mural for a long period of time. And the Sasquatches were looking him and, and eyeing him out and decided to come down and say hi. <laughs> Wow. Yeah, the mural is 20 by 40 feet. So it's a huge mural. It's wow. painted on the bridge's support structure there. And there are stories of Bigfoot using that waterway right there because it's not very far. It's probably one of the narrowest parts of the Columbia River of them swimming back and forth, going from Oregon to Washington. Really? I'm going to go back to that actual mural there. 
and then go back to that one. So that that's cool. Get, there's that's near Multnomah Falls and all that area where they do have many sightings in that area. All right, now let's let, let's talk about this this picture here though real quick. Um, if B actually saw one, then yeah. and you know artists are pretty good on on drawing pretty what much seen, drawing right? what they've seen. Yeah, so we're looking at something pretty dang close to what he saw almost exactly, and it looks more human. On this particular, mm -hmm. you know, photograph, yeah. yeah. I mean, the nose and the and the mouth are not what we hmm. have, you know, think they look like. So maybe it was a distance and it was nighttime and you couldn't really tell. But there you go. He saw something. He saw, uh, you know, Sasquatch. I'm, I'm going to pretty much say, he, yes, he did see one. Yeah, Larry Kangas has a, his own website and he has, he's painted tons of murals all over Oregon and Washington. I did send him an email to ask him more about his sighting, but he hasn't responded yet. So okay, well, hopefully he will. All right. Yep. Okay. Let I'm. You know. Yep. Okay. I'm going to go to number five, and uh, on the artbell.com website, you shall be. You should be able to see this. Okay. Right now, what I have is I have picture number five, which is the um, the knee, thigh, and calf on yeah. the left hand side. So go ahead and talk about this. What are we looking at? This was shot in uh, Grand Rapids, Manitoba, and it was shot on September 14th of 2012. And with just a heading on it, it's a leg of Bigfoot, and there's a question mark. It was submitted by uh, Ken C., a trail cam photo. And then uh, he, after everybody was trying to figure out, well, this could be a leg of a Bigfoot there, one of his friends by the name of Carrie sent in a message and said that uh, he knows exactly what this is, but he's a known hoaxer. It's a leg of a moose, is what they were saying. Okay, so now I have the the moose photograph up. So he was trying to fool the Bigfoot community, and this is why every uh, time somebody comes along with a new picture, uh, I see they get torn apart by the Bigfoot community. Wow. So uh, he he, he actually he actually so what he did is he put it out first, and he let everybody go. Oh my God, you got. It. You got it. You got it. And then he came back and said, "Aha! Uh -huh, I got you." No, he, it's not. He never said anything. His, his one of his friends sent him a, a message saying that this isn't uh, what he's saying it is. He knows exactly what it is. They sent him the, uh, the second picture. They sent to them saying it's a moose. Mm. He said that this picture of the moose was taken within five days of the picture that he sent. But if you look at the bottom of the pictures, there's two different years on them. One's from 2011 and one's from 2012. 2012. Right, I, was I, I at never, that. I seen a lot of elk, and I've even shot a couple, and their leg doesn't look like a human leg like that. Let me go back. Yeah. To that that's it's that's not an elk leg. Me, but... You can see the muscles in the in the uh, what do they call it? The thigh. Okay, uh, that is not an elk. Okay, but now let's knee now even. let's talk about and what everybody should have done first is go how high. Look, look at oh, like the measure the it. measure. Well, well, look at the other tree and look at the camera position of this tree. Look at the ground; it looks fairly flat. Um, I'm thinking, uh, I'm thinking the camera is placed about four to five feet up. That's what my guess is. Now, if that was a moose or an elk or whatever you want to call it, that means the knee had to been at five feet up. Now they do get big. I've seen yeah, they, moose yeah. that are huge, and I'm yeah. going, oh, my huge. God, it looks unbelievable. But uh, it, I don't know. Um, it, if this moose here, if the knee is at five foot, <laughs> that means that moose was probably, oh, I don't know, 15 feet high, 20. <laughs> well, usually the moose have really skinny, spindly legs. Even, even the thigh part, I mean, it, it's kind of big, but... From the front, it's not big. From the side is where it looks big. You know what I'm saying? So, uh, the, and the kneecap doesn't look anything like a human, and that's more like a human-looking leg than an yeah. elk. Well, see the way they um, the way they did it. When you look at the other picture, the elk is from the side, right? Right, I mean, not from the front. So really, we need to take a picture of an elk or a moose from the front. And then look at it. But see how the bottom leg from below the knee, it's almost like it's so narrow. It doesn't work. I yeah. mean, that doesn't it might work. Even be, if it was anything, it would be a rear leg, but I don't even think it's that big. I don't think so either. 
I, yeah. I think somebody's hoaxing the, 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 like the guy. Next to it or something. Yeah, and, and this and this camera here on this particular, and I don't think it's the same camera, but you know, this camera is pointed towards the ground. The yeah. other one was pointed straight ahead. It's probably yeah. five foot the up. Same area. Yeah. I'm going to say... Yes, you know, I can see that. Now I'm in chat. I'm going to say debunked. I'm going to say it's not an elk or a moose, to be honest, only because of the height of what we're it looking at the knee. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Good good, good catch. Very good one. Okay, cool. All right. We are now going to go... Now, for all those who have been... Um, this story that Danny is going to talk about... Oh, yeah, next has been all over the news, all over Facebook. Go ahead, Danny. All right. This was February 16th. The mysterious lights that appeared in the sky. This is uh, from uh, Mississippi. The, the people are uh, Rainier and Edith Shatley, Shattles in Jackson County, Mississippi. They, they're on 150 acres. They set up a trail cam picture, a trail camera up next to their feeder to try to get pictures of bucks. Because they knew the deer were out there and they wanted to see how many bucks were out there. So they set up their trail camera in there and it started taking pictures. Around 7.24 p.m., the first picture, the deer were normal. And 7.29, the dim light appeared. And at 7.35, the light gets brighter. And then at 7.53... Okay, well, a weird right, shape appears. Right now, I am... Um... Okay, it's I have... within a half an hour, it looks like. Okay, so right now, I'm at uh, 7.24 p.m., and I, I see possibly three. I got the, the, the deer in front. Now you're saying a small light. At uh, 7:29, a dim light appears. Okay. I don't know if I have that picture, but okay, no problem. Um, so I, I see other animals in the background. I see the deer looking at the camera. Probably the camera just went click and it heard it and it turned, and that's why the eyes are glowing because of the infrared. So now we're gonna go to. Uh, there. All right. So now we have the deer lit up. Yeah. And they're saying that the um, whatever was near it is what lit it up. But um, you, usually when the camera takes a picture, it lights up the area too. Right. But but not always, cause as we'll see later on. Now here but I'm. I, yeah. Yes. Sky. Here I'm seeing a a different light light source coming from the left hand side, right at the deer. Yeah, and they didn't really say if they only set up one camera, so that. Possibly could be either someone with a flashlight or a second camera that they set up flashing. Okay, I see what you're saying. Know. Or it could be something from the sky. Okay. Okay. Now I got the one with the deer, like caught in the headlight, look looking at. I don't know if it's a camera, but looking at the lights above two up two lighted up objects now. Yeah, and this is off the ground. Whatever it is, it's pretty high off the ground, and there's no road there. It's out in the middle of a field it, this was actually a, from a video and she did take the camera crew out there mm -hmm. to see the and the, yeah, see this the area to show them that there was no road there right and i remember i saw i saw the clip and the video and this is like a um an, an opening all grassy area and there's aligned with trees very high trees so yeah, it's not near their house either it's, it's back in the woods away okay Pretty weird. So now we're gonna. Uh, okay, so now the only reason I bring it up, it's not Bigfoot related, but the only reason I bring it up <laughs> is because we've been getting these same kind of pictures. David Ragosa right. sets up trail cam pictures, trail cameras out there, and when he goes back, and I want to talk about that. Same kind of light. Right, I want to talk about that. Um, were you with us when? No, this was before your time. As a matter of fact, we got these lights right at the same time per, time period of the actual Sasquatch walking up the hill. Um, this is where these lights came out right around that time period. So this was like in 2008. 2009. Yeah. Um, we, and I don't want to say we, I was with them when we uh, got the, the the SD cards out of the cameras and then these lights were on them. And I'm going to go ahead and put up the first one. So, you know, every, these guys are getting so much publicity. We got these lights too, but we got them in the Sierra Mountains, guys. All right. Now people were going, oh, that's a guy with a head, uh, a head, you know, headlamp, um, flashlight, or it was a helicopter. And I'm going, okay, let's step back here. Uh, this location where these cameras are placed is in the deep forest. There are no um, campgrounds. There's no people. If you can look at the time, we're talking about 12, 12 in the morning. 
Uh, there's no all trees, all redwoods surrounding this location. So, if this was a person with a headlamp in the middle of nowhere at this particular time, you're out of your freaking mind. So, I want to say no. Um, is this a headlight <laughs> in the trees? Not even, no. a, not even a drone because you couldn't fly those at night no. down in the, right. the wooded areas. And there's no reason for a drone to be out in the middle of nowhere. Not unless it was trying to find Sasquatch. Then, okay, then we got a story here. But no, um, this is not uh, a headlamp. Um, I, You know what I'm looking at? And, and I don't know. Um, but, you know, they say Bigfoot's eyes tend to glow at night. Uh, if you have an infrared camera, like a game cam, taking a snapshot, and we could very well be looking at Sasquatch's eyes on this camera, on this particular picture right here. Uh, I don't know. I, you know, they're just glowing at the, right at the infrared right, part. That's exactly to, right. To wash it out. Yep. And that's why you you can't see a flash. You can only see the eyes. Yep. That's exactly there what. There is a pair of eyes at the bottom too. <laughs> and, and I don't know what those are. I I'm. <sighs> I can't, I don't know why those would end up, I don't know, I, I don't know, I, yeah, okay, I'm going to show you the next photograph, this cam, this photograph was taken on the same camera, um, now we're getting really spooky and really cool because look at the radiance of the light that's coming up from above, um, camera, uh, or I want to say flashlights don't cause this, um, <laughs> Uh, this is the very spooky part of the forest. David Dragosa can tell you that the Native Americans way back when uh, pretty much said that a lot of spooky stuff happens here. It's very um, it, it's sacred, land. sacred land. All right. So when you say sacred land, you know, all, it, it, a lot of weird things happen. Well, they, they don't even go in that area. No, they don't actually. They, they, that area is left for Bigfoot. And they don't even go there. So, I mean, the only people that goes there is crazy guys like us <laughs> and Bigfoot. And uh, and then somebody was saying it's it's the moon. No, it's not the moon. It's because close to the camera. Uh, yeah, it, 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 there's trees that are, I don't know, 50, 75, 100 feet high right around this camera. There's no way the moon would shine through all that. There's just absolutely no way. So... Um, we don't know what these things are, you guys. We really don't. But those guys in uh, in Texas aren't the first ones to ever get weird, you know, lights on cameras. You know, we get them here in the Sierra Mountains. If, if I would have thought, it's weird because he does get beer, uh, deer and bear in mm -hmm. front of there, and you can see the trees, you can see the leaves, you can see everything. Uh -huh. yeah. But on these, you can't see any of the background. Right, right. Like the light is the light. the light is purposely blinding out the the area. Uh, it's whatever. like checking out the camera, right. whatever it is. And here is another light what source. It's an alien or something. <laughs> an alien? I don't know. Because Bigfoot's I, and aliens, they go together. Um, well, you know, there's another theory, uh, another yeah. you know topic we can talk about that uh, you know people think that they're not from here, they're from up there, they're pets of the aliens. Uh, you know, we can. In fact, I just loaded a show up on. YouTube, mm -hmm. it's the Courtright Reservoir abduction, mm -hmm. and they talk about that. Right, the actual abductees talk about Bigfoot and aliens being like together. Right. So I mean, hey, if you guys want to go take a look at that and, and look at that particular show we did uh, called um, Eleven, what is it? Ten, ten, eleven, oh two, eleven, oh two. Very cool story, you guys. That freak you out. It'd be the last time you go camping. I, I think the I titled it uh, Abduction at Courtright Reservoir. So you just type that in YouTube, bam. <laughs> so, all right, Danny, anything else? That's it. Right yes, on. You know, that one right there, That that's interesting picture. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I don't know. It's lit up right by the camera. Mm -hmm. I, I, it's happy we weren't there when they came. I don't want to get probes. <laughs> <laughs> so I we got to go back up, guys. Yeah, um, yeah. When is your daughter your daughter going back? Is she leaving on Wednesday? On Wednesday, okay. Uh, yeah. Well, let, let's see. Maybe Saturday. I don't know. Let, let, yeah. Let's let's shoot for Saturday. Uh, I will keep you update, and we'll see what happens. Okay. Okay. All right, Great. man. Thank you, Danny. 
All right. Talk to you later. later. Good night, Peace. Danny. Peace out. All right. Bye. Bye. All right. Uh, that was a Squatch Report by Danny Valdrama in Pretty talking good. in his basement of his house, mother's house. And the reason why he brought that up is maybe we can go ahead and talk about <laughs> the ranting part. Um, <laughs> all right. Where do I want to go with this? Um, there was a story. Okay, I got a phone call. Uh, and this happened Monday of last week or Tuesday of last week. And I got a call from a guy who is now a friend of ours on Facebook and his name is JJ Jesse James he's uh, out of Kansas City Missouri and he I don't know how he found us he was actually living in a different part actually he was living in Northern California and he moved to Kansas City mm -hmm. um, he found our show a long time ago several years ago and he's been watching us been following us all of his friends his relatives know he's um, he's into the stuff that we are okay and this is how things like this happen. You know, people know other people that are into the paranormal, UFOs, Bigfoot, monsters, you know, all that cool stuff. And um, Jesse James went into his, uh, his favorite store, let's just say, and uh, he knows the owner really well because, you know, he spends a lot of money in there and he buys potato chips and whatever, whatever. And his name is Cliff and his... Um, his, his the store owner told him that something had just happened where his one of his sons were uh, was at and that was in Missouri um, now I tried to get all the information from the phone and there was something major going on in this particular town and I mean um, something of great magnitude happened where the, the town itself was being shut down in quarantine and people were being turned away. The media was being turned away. You couldn't use your cell phones. Something like this. So something really big was happening. So I tried to get most of the information and I posted it right away on my wall on Facebook to see if anybody was living in that area or had people who lived in that area that could possibly do some investigating for us and, and check for us to see if this was actually happening. Um... The town in question that I got over the phone was Wilmington, with an M, Wilmington, and um, in Missouri. And what happened is supposedly something that night crashed through the sky, made a huge sound, a lot of lights involved, and um, then then that morning or early morning, you know, people drove up, and I don't want, I don't want to say it's military because we haven't talked to the person who told his dad Cliff about all this. And as a matter of fact, he, they can't find him. Uh, after he told them what was going on, they can't find him now. And they're actually getting scared because what they told them what was happening kind of sort of kind of freaked them out. And they know it, their son and their son wouldn't lie about something like this. So I went and I posted it on Facebook again with the town Wilmington with an M. Well, uh, you know, several people started sharing and you know, they wanted more information. And then a couple of days later or the day after, I got a couple of people came on and they said, you know, there's no such town as called Wil Wilmington. You're making this all up. You guys are hoaxers. You guys are trying to scare people. You're finger fear mongers. Um, knock it off. You guys have no idea what you're doing. You guys are losers. And as a matter of fact, Danny made a comment. You, you're probably... In, in the basement of your mother's house doing all this stuff and I'm going okay wow are you serious why are we getting slammed that hard because of a couple of letters that I misspelled possibly on the name of a town that doesn't exist so now we're thinking maybe it was Willington Missouri well it was kind of odd that these two people who started slamming us and started uh, you know saying names and hoaxers and making us sound like you know we're in this just to scare people you know i am not a friend with these people i have no mutual friends with these people i have no idea where they came from they have some weird names like bubba sparks um and it just it, stuff didn't make any sense uh people thought we were making the story up all right and it no we are not making the story up so what i want to do is i want to get jesse james jj on from kansas city 
so you can hear it from the horse's mouth where I got the story from. So he can tell you what's going on right now. So that way you understand that, you know what, there's something definitely going on. Um, we're just trying to get to the bottom of it. All right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to call JJ really quick here. And I told him I was going to call him at 830 his time, but hopefully he's not watching TV or anything. So, um, Okay, I'm going to call him right now. And I just lost the chat in this computer. I have to work on it. So, it takes me so long to get into it, and then I never stay in it too long. So, I'm going to try it with my phone. Hello, hello. JJ. Yes, sir. Hey, all How's right. How's going, uh, JJ? Are, are you still watching TV? Yeah, I'm going to pause it. Hold on. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> right. All right. All right. What you going to do when Jeffrey calls you? <laughs> <laughs> all right. We got JJ on the phone calling from Kansas City, Missouri. So how's the weather out there? Uh, Just a little on the chill side. Yeah. It's near Kansas City. I'm in Topeka. Topeka, Kansas. Okay. Topeka. Okay, right on. All right. Now, you called me last week. What day was it? Like a Monday or Tuesday? I think it was Tuesday. Tuesday. Okay. And you called yeah. me and you were telling me you just got a story from the owner of a liquor store. His name was Cliff. And yeah. um, you wanted to say, hey, what? Was, well, the reason why he told you is because he knows you're into this stuff and he knows that you know the right people to talk to in case you come across something like this. So, what? Well, well. I just walked into the store, and Cliff saw me and said, hey, man, something weird went down. And I'm thinking he was talking about the weather because they had a severe thunderstorm line that went up throughout of uh, Dallas, Texas, into uh, uh, certain parts of Oklahoma going north-northeast. And I thought it had clipped the southern end of Missouri, and thought that's what he was going to talk about, but it wasn't. He says, uh, a friend of mine... Uh, it's this town called Wellington that he was uh, doing something coming back late, uh, early in the morning around about three, and he said he witnessed a massive explosion. And shortly after that, he was trying to make his way toward it to see what was up. He said by the time he got to the area, man, he said they was quarantining everything, uh, turning people away, even the media sources, uh, people with cell phones, they, they were turning them away and, uh, so far, we haven't been able to find anybody to uh, confirm that story other than him, and now he's scared. Um, but, and, and when you go and look for that name, uh, we look for Wil Wilmington right. and Will Wellington. And Wilmington, with two L's, they show listed on Google search, it says uh, videos of Wilmington, Missouri. And then when you go put click on the link nothing nothing's there right like, now now what caught my attention at the very beginning is that you told me cliff and his son mark i i guess went right. searching on the internet and right. and they were finding out that the location where he his his brother stated started to disappear from google you know search and everything off of facebook off, off of, of facebook everything somebody was was uh burping about what had happened and they made it disappear right i don't know who they were but they made the story disappear and so i kind of got curious and i'm thinking okay where's white in the air force base and when i was in the air force station in montana we had a bunch of nukes all over M montana so i'm thinking maybe uh, it was a nuclear missile and a lightning bolt hit it somewhere but i haven't been able to confirm or deny that's what happened but uh, now, um, why, why did, now, I talked to Cliff on the phone, okay, you gave me the phone number, or actually you were right. you were there and he was uh, able to talk to me away from customers and I talked to Cliff, the owner and the father of the witness, or friend right. of the witness, and you basically, you know, he basically told me exactly what you said, that right. something was going down, um, and, um, and I think he said it or you said it, but what made them go on the internet to find out what was going on? They just decided to do it upon themselves, or I. 
Well, yeah, yeah, pretty much. You know, like any, anybody that sees something weird, you go on the Internet and start looking and see what happened. Right. It's like I did, you know. And I believe Cliff 100%, and, and I had just seen uh, this UFO show on uh, the, the new MUFON show. Hang, hang on one, right. And they did a story on the uh, the Kansas City area, uh, Blue Springs, Kansas, uh, Missouri, rather, and where there was this blue orb, blue UFO, and... I was curious, you know, maybe there's something going on again, you know. Right, right. And uh, but so far, nobody has stepped forward with any more information. And I totally believe him, a hundred percent. Right, something happened. Right. You know? Okay. Now, um, Cliff's son, Mark, or that is friend Mark. No, his employee. His employee, Mark. Right. Um, and his, Mark's brother is the one that saw this. They saw this. Now they can't get a hold of his brother, right? The witness. Well, the phone number that was working has all of a sudden stopped to exist. Yeah. It is gone. It is not working anymore. <laughs> <laughs> um, which is, and that's Mark's number, right? That's the number that we have for Mark. Right. Exactly. And that number has stopped working. Okay, which I when find. You call it. And uh, I will see Mark uh, probably tomorrow. Okay. And I am going to try my best <laughs> to get his uh, brother to call in to call you. Yeah, I need to talk to him. ASAP. Uh, and I now, they, they Cliff and Mark was saying that he was scared. Why Why was he scared? Well, he says, uh, well, what I would assume would be men in black uh, were quarantined in the area. Uh, maybe they had some interchanging of words about don't be repeating anything what you saw. Um, they just made every evidence disappear right and trying to hush the story down and all my years of uh dealing with ufos i've always heard the story about men in black right they come in and sanitize the area and try to keep it as hush hush and tell people you didn't see anything and don't say anything so there's a good strong possibility of that but but I'm going to see if I can't do a Google search to see if any missile silos are in that area. Okay. You know, maybe a lightning bolt hit the area, but uh, you know what? I don't know, man. And, and no, to me, something else happened. Um, a lightning bolt hitting a location. They wouldn't quarantine or push the media away. That's something. Exactly. That, that's something way beyond, you know, mysterious. I, I something else happened. Plus, phones don't just like lose their number. <laughs> yeah, so I, I, you know, I, there's something else going on, JJ, and I need definitely need for you to get on it and uh, get a hold of Mark tomorrow and find out why his phone's not working. Maybe he just. And, uh, and again, I, 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 I will try to even find out where Mark's brother is at. Okay. To see if any is any way I can face to face with the guy. Absolutely. And ask him. How know? far? How far are you away from w Willington, Missouri? Oh, it's probably. 135 miles. Oh, that's a long way. Okay. Yeah, um, go ahead and go back de there and uh, get some more info. And, dude, you can call me anytime. As soon as you find out some information, you give me a ring, all right? I certainly will, Jeffrey. All right, man. Thanks, dude. Appreciate yeah, it. Just like Alex, JJ. All right, bye. Okay, bye. see ya. Bye. He's a good man. Yeah. Guy. These guys, uh, he's, in, he's into, you know, all the stuff. This guy that we're just talking to right now, he was stationed. He's a retired um, Navy he was actually on uh, aircraft carriers in charge of um, fire detail. You know, he was the one who was on standby in case they, you know, the planes came in and, and crashed or whatever. He was medic the whole nine yards. So this guy was actually like the, the, the head cheese on the, on the aircraft carrier. So he knew exactly what was going on. And for um, a long time, like from the Vietnam War all the way till he retired, I think. Yeah, he's been in it for a long time, so I'm he's kind not of an idiot. I'm kind of blown away that he's actually talking to us because I'm sure he's sure right now he's uh, you know, you know, um, you know, getting money from the military on, on on living off of it. So uh, let's hope they don't you know sabotage him and blackmail him and to to leave all this alone. So we'll see what happens. So I'm, I'm he'll give me a call. Trust me, when JJ said he's gonna get to the bottom of this, he's gonna get to the bottom of this. Well, so. you know. When when all them people on Facebook started saying all that stuff, and we put this on here, right? Um, they got to understand that. I mean, that I, that's what I put. When you get a tip 
from somebody like JJ or mm-hmm. Jesse James, mm-hmm. and you've known him a long time, you know his background, you know that anything flying in the sky, this guy could like Identify. know exactly what it is right. or isn't. And then he says something, you take it serious and you start following up on it. You put it on Facebook to see if you can get any help or if anybody else lives around there. And you don't expect people to come along and start calling you names. and Which was odd. You know, because yeah, it was really weird. It, it, that told me that we were onto something and then we were trying to be, people were trying to shut us up. Uh, you know, and this is the part where I want to go and rant a little bit. And I think Alan does too, because Alan was really ticked off at the people who were slamming us. Uh, because we were trying to tell the story and trying to get it out. Um, uh, Stories, all right? How many of you out there who are into what we do are also part uh, or friends or like pages of other paranormal societies and or blogs or websites and all you have is stories? These guys tell their stories from other people and put them on their websites and put them on their Facebook so you can read their sto- their stories and they, click on their page. And they don't even really have one their self. No, they, they're, it, they're, it's other people's stories, yeah. all right? Stories from 1967 again, 1979, 1984, 1995. Oh, a Bigfoot, here's a story from a, a, a park ranger from 2001 up in Orange, uh, I'm not Orange, Oregon, and uh, he saw a Bigfoot taking a bath and wow this is awesome story and come and look on my way website and a matter of fact I'm gonna go to YouTube and I'm gonna tell you the story so you can come and listen to my voice tell the story and just click on my YouTube page please now so I can get a thousand views and I can make money all right we were getting slammed and th- it th- I think this is only like the second time we've ever been slammed I think we got we were getting slammed on two stories on the same day at the same time. Okay. Um, that doesn't usually happen. No. It only happens when we're actually on to something and people are trying to shut us up. Yeah. Um, it's kind of funny. You know, Alan right now is, we have literally years, I mean, before even Alan was in the picture and he wasn't literally in the picture, but he was part of the talk show, but out of the picture per se, like where Emerald is, um, we had like two or three years of shows and what he's doing is he's going in and he's trying to get the, find the the best ones because we've done some really cool stuff that you guys all have no idea that we have stories about that are going to blow you away for example the 411 episode with david polites it was an over three hour show i am the only one to this day that he has given me three hours of his time, all right? This show called, um, if I can remember correctly, it starts with a C, uh, co- 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 Coast to Coast. <laughs> <laughs> um, he's only, he only gave them. He must be in the dream <laughs> land. <No. laughs> um, he only gave them, I don't know, an hour and a half, mm-hmm. two hours. David Pleites gave me three hours, all right? Now, so Alan, retrieved that show and it took him a long time to download it onto YouTube. <laughs> I thought he was pulling my chain, but within a month. Like we've we've it's maybe been a month. Okay. Maybe a month. But maybe. it very low key. All right. Yeah, not um, really pushing it. Just put it on Facebook. Right. Um we've gotten over three thousand hits on it, but again, by word of mouth. Um and people it's four thousand. No, I saw you went up to four thousand. All right, within within actually within probably four days it went up a thousand. I think. Yeah, it's been going like that. Yeah. Okay. That's why I know it, it. Like the the when we didn't have a show. When when did we go? When did we go <clears> and <throat> we had to play the uh, rerun? Oh oh, oh 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 oh. Uh, that was um, when we taped our show. What was right that? Uh, March 9th. Yeah. So it was March 9th. So from March 9th till now it has like almost 4,500 okay. and, and and that is the reason and, and I want to say the major reason is because they got played on the artbell.com dark matter network 
and I'm not I'm not paying for uh we're not paying ads you know like to boost oh it no no we don't, we can anything. care less we just we just put it on there and put it on Facebook and because you know, that's all. David Polites opened up to me mm-hmm. about uh, on a couple of cases uh, that I you know I don't know why he opened up uh, I'm glad he did um, because that three hour show is probably one of the best we've ever done. Now, David Polites actually emailed Alan and said what, he, he was selling books like crazy and he didn't understand why. He found out that, that some of the um, responses that he was getting from these book sales, that uh, the reason why, because they saw our episode on David Polites 411. Some of, the, some of the responses that we're getting on, I know I don't have it on, no, 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 it's not no, no, on no, no, there. No, 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 no. Some of the responses we're getting are amazing. Um, uh, one of the guys that that um, I, I mean, he I think he should be like asking David Polites. That, 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 that question you were talking, talk, yeah, that was very. Uh, I that, mean, it, they. Wow. I mean, they're asking about like, is there any bones found? And I think they did. I think we did talk about. it. I haven't listened to the show in a very long time. I didn't listen to it. I just pulled it out. Added a little bit, you know, uh, for the front and the back, and then mm-hmm. and then put it up there. But he's saying, you know, he's saying that maybe the Bigfoots are taking the pieces of clothing and throwing them somewhere along the way, and there's where the dogs go. Dad, I never even thought about that. That you know, the very... dogs go there, and then then they lose the trail after that. Right. But they they find the clothes or the shoe or and that's it you know. Now, um, it, the reason why I brought this this particular story up is that you know people were slamming us because of that one uh, case in Wilmington or Willington of last Tuesday. Um, I, people are tr- are trying to bring us down right now, uh, and they're trying their deepest hardest but they can't and they're trying to find things on us to bring us down and they can't Uh, and i'm gonna give you uh, and and they're trying to talk smack about us but they can't because you know we're legit here all right we're not all the stuff we're showing you all the stuff we're talking about is 100 percent legit Um, just like the pictures we they put up lights where the deer has lights on it and we bring our own pictures, and we show now, you know, lights. Now, you're you know, you're probably you're camera. probably going, "Wow, I've never heard of these lights. How come you never show these pictures before?" We have. Back when it happened to us in 2009 and 2008, when we got these photographs with these head, these weird lights. The only problem is, I didn't take it to the Fox News and look, look, look. I got these lights. Put me on camera. Woohoo! Make me famous. I didn't do that. If you were watching our show back then, if you were watching our website back then, then you would have seen these photographs. But that was, this is old news to us. Well, you know, then you have these people in Texas got these things on, uh, these lights on their camera and everybody's going, oh my God, awesome. Even ABC News here in Fresno is running the damn story. Well, how come they didn't run the story when I had these lights or David Regosa had these lights back in 2009? All right. They didn't even care back then. Um, so it, 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 actually, that's been the story of us. Yeah, I mean, it's we like get good stuff, and then oh my god, we have the greatest good, stuff, you know. and it's real stuff. It's because we go out and get the stuff. It's not from second hand. This is coming from our team, the people we know personally, and we got it here in our hand. I I probably have pictures in my laptop and then on the hard drive that you guys haven't even seen yet. I know that. Oh my god! In fact, I'm. I have a hard drive that's 250 gigabytes, <laughs> and it's full of nothing but SPS shows. And now, and, now, and, and is, now, now he just said SPS because that's what my show used to be called, the SPS Radio, back in the days when they sang a paranormal society. And I was, I was Emerald Spot. <laughs> you know, um, yeah. So, you know, there are. Then he was telling me, you know, oh my God, that hard drive is completely full. Yeah. So what he's going to go do is he's going to go down. He's going to go through all these shows little by little and find the best one. Then he's going to put them on YouTube and put links on the paranormalcentral.net website because we have some good stuff that you guys out there haven't even seen yet. You know, it's cool. It's like, it took me, 
just for the uh, just for the David Polite show, uh-huh. it was four hundred and thirty minutes to, to upload. It. <laughs> so many, and six, it, sixty divided by four hundred is it was like four, seven hours. Seven hours yeah. to download that. Okay, that's what he's doing at home on and his then, time, uh, and it's in high def, oh, 1080p. Right. Oh my god, okay. high def guys, that's some killer stuff. Now then, we did. I think it was in two uh, July of two thousand twelve. We. We actually have Kerry Cassidy, Ooh, uh, Lyle know. Blackburn, David Weatherly, um, Ed Grimsley, uh, and there, there's some more. Uh, Lisa, I mean. Uh, Rita, Rita Louise. Rita Louise. Um, what he's talking you about know, is, what year was that? It was July 12th, 2012. Well, how do you memorize this shit? Well, I was looking at it all oh. morning. <laughs> okay, so but two I, years already, ago. I uploaded them this right. morning. It okay. took me, again, I started around 8 o'clock and around 1, 1 p.m. Right. And they're, they're little short ones. They're not like three hours or right. anything. And I think a couple of them we do. It was actually called the SAC UFO Con. Right. And we played the, like, you, you we would do a, we had this little place set up. And and we were actually broadcasting live, but it was like not at the set time of the show. Right. Nobody really was paying attention. Maybe a handful of people it, actually saw it, these it, videos. It was during the weekend. We were broadcasting live from a, a location in Sacramento in a hotel. Yeah. And uh, what we did is we literally took our setup here and we transported it yeah. to Sacramento. The the flying saucer and everything. Yeah. We had a booth. It was killer. Um, it was probably, and I actually have pictures. Uh, I would, we actually almost call it, caused killer accidents <laughs> on the freeway. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I got pictures of people taking pictures of us. It was funny. We're going down the 99 freeway towards Sacramento and you guys all know my giant UFO, uh, right. That I built while well, it was in the back of my pickup in a diagonal way, you know, like this. And, you know, we're driving down the 99 freeway and I said, you know what, I'm just going to go all out on this, right? So I put a dome, a clear dome on there and I got an alien that had a smaller one, not like this one here, but a smaller alien. And we tied it to the UFO. And now we're driving down the freeway, right? And you have cars pulling on the side and both, because I'm driving in the middle lane and people are driving to the, the, the both sides of us, right? And they got their cell phones and they're doing this. Ah! And I remember some girl yelled out of the window, where are you going? I want to go with you. Uh, yeah. We were laughing. Um, we were causing a commotion on the 99 freeway. There were so many pictures taken. Alan was just giddy all the way. He was loving every minute of it. It was funny. I was driving, and I didn't really want to turn sideways because everybody's hands were out the window doing with their cell phones going... It was funny. That, um, that turned out to be really great. Oh, my God. That, I think that was the beginning. I think I think you're right. I think that was like the start, start of, of what we're what we're like a morphing into yeah, now. Yeah, yeah. Um, but, but those shows, I have them on there. Um, some of them, it, it, you know, it's only like maybe twenty minute interview. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But then we, you, we let the camera run, right? And mm-hmm. somebody, I think Eddie would go over and we would pan it around, right. and and we showed. Like we were, they put us in a little corner. They had no idea we were going to come in with this full-on <laughs> studio, right? <laughs> and they put us like in the back somewhere where, where they eat. Yeah, it was like nobody was going to see us. But the next thing you know, we're like the most popular place in there, and we have like a whole audience <laughs> because it's like the cafeteria, you know. Uh, but only it, it was. It's really good video. I mean, and really like Carrie Cassidy was being really. Uh, Outspoken. Animated. She, she was and, out. Yeah, she was like, I remember. Oh, yeah, and she wasn't just like talking to you straight up. She was so passionate about what she was talking about. She was addressing the audience, and there's probably about 300 people sitting there. I mean, a big bunch of people filled up the whole area and, and listened to Carrie Cassidy. So, um, yeah, so go look at the video. I mean, we took... Uh, I'll, I'll have them up on... I, I had to stop okay. so that I could come and do the show tonight. Right. Um, and I have a couple more that, that actually I'm going to load up. Okay. And, but only I'll get them over on the, um, onto paranormalcentral.net. And I'm also going to load them up on the like page, Paranormal Central like page, okay. and the links to them. Right. So everybody could find them. I'll, um, if you want, I'll tag them over to your page so that people, you know, your friend list can get them. Okay. And, I'll, you know, a lot of people out there, 
are asking us, man, you really have to do more shows than just a Sunday show. Because, uh, I mean, we're getting emails now from all over the world. All thanks, over. thanks to Dark Matter and ArtBell.com website. Thank you. I mean, seriously, we are getting other countries that I've never even heard of that are sending messages saying, you guys rock, and I thank you very much from the bottom of my heart, whoever you are, way out, <laughs> I mean, are liking us. But people are saying, we want more stuff. Obviously, we only do one show a week. Um, now, you you can go back and watch all these shows. As a matter of fact, you know, some 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 ladies were emailing us that you know um you know i'm i'm about to go to bed but i have your your show on the you know on the laptop and i'm watching it here before i go to bed and that's what she does so um awesome i appreciate it that's just telling us that you guys like what we're doing and we're going to keep doing it the way we're doing it and we're not going to change um we got the lady that emailed me or uh, sent me a and, and you know what is funny they send um, facebook messages they're not your friend. They're not friends of a friend. Right. And you get this m Facebook message that says, man, you guys are great. And you help me. I'm a, a ER nurse. And you help me unwind at the end of the day, you know. And I love all your videos and keep doing it. Yeah. Um, and you know what? Uh, a couple of people uh, who, were, who were leaving comments on some of the YouTube, like, for example, the 411, uh, they were criticizing us. Yeah, sit uh, on your hands. There, there. One guy was saying, you know, you move your hand too much. Well, look, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do this for you. There you go. Um, uh, you know, um, people are nitpicking us, and I think they just, I think we're doing something right. Um, so we're gonna keep doing what we're doing, uh, and I think it's gonna take us places. Uh, and I hope you're here for the ride because it's, uh, we've only, it's only beginning, man. I can tell you that right now. Um, well, actually, for me, like. Yeah, I mean, if you're gonna if you're gonna like be critiquing, make it something I could use. I mean, I'm <laughs> I, I I could I'm not opposed to getting something that's kind of bad, you know, that's something I do wrong. I all help. I would like to like better myself and better what we do. So make it like a make it like that. And I mean, it could be something in a negative light, but you know, let us know. But only don't don't like get on there and just say you guys are a bunch of doof you know i mean we don't need we that. Are, we already know that yeah yeah tell me something i don't know yeah <laughs> but i mean critique it the right way and make it positive and heck maybe you know uh, we'll give you credit mm -hmm. <laughs> um you know what i want to do um is um i i want to you know, i was in chat for like two minutes and uh one of our one of our persons that listens and he's younger um, they were saying that there was a uh, UFO sighting in Mer Merdera, right? And they were asking about that. Oh, um, as a matter of fact, that video was put up on the Facebook wall. And uh, it was a couple of days ago. Um, and actually, it was posted on the Fox Network here in Fresno, KMPH Fox. And cool. a friend of ours saw it and shared it on my what on my wall on Facebook. Um and it 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 was three no four lights up in the sky and one was moving very weird very bright um danny valdrama our squatch reporter said you know what it might be skydivers and i didn't think about that oh, um, night? yeah yeah you bet with lights um so so, so 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 danny huh? took it upon himself to send an email to that particular company because his Friend Jolene actually went and I think did some night skydiving, if I'm not mistaken. And um, so we're going to find out if those skydivers were in the vicinity in that area at that particular time. So we can go ahead and get that theory out or debunk it if that's the case. So at this point in time, we don't know what those lights were. Um, I don't know. I, I, I really don't know what those lights were. Um, one light moved fairly quickly. But then again, I don't I don't know if the skydivers had their chutes already open, and it, so I, I don't know. Uh, but um, it, it's very cool looking. It's on my Facebook wall, but you're gonna have to scroll down a long ways, and uh, we'll. Uh, yeah, I don't know if is it, if I, if I find out what they are. Obviously, I will tell you. But at this point in time, I can't because I don't know what they are. So, all right. Um, what I would now, I what's this bummer? Uh, you know, I, I was gonna have. Um, yeah, you might talk about that. We we're going to have somebody. 
Well, I mean, oh, I think you did. Already. I did. You know, I, I, we're going to have Tammy Thomas. She is the uh, for all those who watched our episode on monsters and mysteries. Uh, what is it called? Bigfoot Wars. Uh, yeah. Bigfoot Wars episode. They there were three stories in that hour episode, and her one her one of the uh, stories was hers was the evil gnome. And that was in Porterville, California, which is just not too far away south from Fresno, California. Now, what's kind of odd is that the incident that took place of this particular evil gnome happened to be in a house that was backed up to a river. Does anybody know what that river was called? It's called the Thule River, which happens to run through the Thule Reservation up in the mountains for, um, uh, you know, for that particular uh, area um so uh, you know it's kind of weird that the Thule reservation or the Thule river you know comes into play here because uh, you know that's where the bigfoots are up in that area up in the hills um now what's kind of cool is that i'm going to go ahead and tell you right now tammy even said that they had a bigfoot sighting on highway 65 which runs north and south from uh, Porterville to Bakersfield and I went and I'm not familiar with that area at all so I had to go on the Google Earth and look at you know how you know highway 65 and she, there's there's no mountains there may be little hills but no mountains but a lot of orange trees out there nothing Ooh. but orange trees so she said the Bigfoot ran across this, the, the highway from one orange orchard to the other side so obviously the Bigfoot was munching down on some oranges. You guys who live in the foothills of the Sierra Mountains, the Bigfoots are not way up there. They are down here, especially during the winter for the, the orange seasons. And they're gonna be probably down here during the summer when there's grapes and there's peaches and plums. Those guys are gonna be pigging out, but they do it during the nighttime when you guys are asleep. This is where, uh, hope sooner than later, we're gonna get, you know, some uh, FLIR cameras, some really good FLIR cameras, because all we're gonna need to do, dude, is really just go up to the foothills with all the orange or in the winter and just turn on that sucker and do a, a 180 like this. And we're gonna see something running. I mean, there's no ifs, ands, or buts about it. I mean, because they're, they're running right <laughs> there. Yeah, I like that. I, I've actually been talking to my son about that. Like, uh, we have no idea if we're going to get signed for this show, but but only it's fun to sit and think about it if you had a budget. And that's one of the things I would probably buy as a Fleur. Oh, my God, yeah. And, and some kind of RV <laughs> so that you could put monitors and everything in it and and all your cameras. And I would mount the Fleur. I would try to do it like the that Fleur truck. Mm-hmm. Um, we got to play in a Fleur truck one time, and oh man, you know, had like a three hundred thousand dollar Fleur camera and you know, thermal imaging and everything. And they said it could frame a guy standing on a hill or anywhere really twenty miles away. It could frame it, like say in your camera, you could frame you know somebody standing in front of you. This thing could frame you twenty miles away. But anyways, I know I can't afford that one. But only I would, I would, could you imagine if you drove up to anywhere in the foothills or out there around Sanger where we've got like, I don't know, a half a dozen uh, Bigfoot sightings and just camped right there, parked on the side of the road and then run that, those cameras up a little bit and just let them run and, and go on the DVR. <laughs> we would get so much, I, I it would be like. You see that thing run that way? You see that? I mean, it, it, I mean, it, I would, I would park like uh, the one where you were talking about uh, your was it? Uh, oh man, Adolf's friend. Yeah. That parked on the bridge, and then this, this thing came out of the trees and attacked. Oh his yeah, 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 yeah. His El Camino, and you know, ripped the tailgate up on a you know on a collector car. Right. And you know the guy's not going to tear up his car, but. I mean, you know, park somewhere over there. That's like right by a bunch of oranges and the river. And it has, you know, like Bigfoots and these things that, you know, fly. We, you know, that's one thing. God, I don't want to say that I, I'm, I'm asking because I'm not. I know eventually we'll get some. But what's holding us back is funds. Yeah. 
it's fun. It, it, dinero, money is holding us back right now from actually probably giving you guys the best evidence of Bigfoot that you will ever, ever come across anywhere in the world. Because we know where they're at. It's just that we don't have the funds to get the camera that we need because, you know, we all have lives. We all, you know, it's not like, you know, we're making any money doing what we're doing right now. We're not Love it. having a great time. Yeah, we're having a blast. It isn't um, like making us rich. Yeah, I mean, not at all. So <laughs> actually, we spend more than we make. Oh God. Yeah. Um. So, you know, hopefully, uh, we're eventually going to get the equipment we need to really blow the paranormal field away. And I think because we know where all this stuff is at, it's just that we can't get it on camera or get the proper evidence that we need. Granted, we are getting great stuff because people are bringing it to us. Uh, and that, and, and we're getting our own. Oh yeah, we're getting I mean, our own too. Not just, I mean, not just getting it brought to us, right? So, um, uh, you I mean, know, like following up, like the uh, people tell us where it is, and then we go out there and we find tracks and we find mm-hmm. uh, places where these things are sleeping in in uh, swampy areas, right in the valley, right. And they go in there and then they spend all day long sleeping and snoozing just right across from their food, the oranges and the peaches and the plums. And then when it gets dark, then they jump out and they follow the little creeks and the canals and everything. And they just climb out right where the food is. And then they climb back in there and go back and hide in their little five acre swampy area. (laughs) Yeah. You know, and man... There, I mean, we know where the swampy areas are. Yeah. We have cameras there. We, we just oh, we need, need the right go. cameras. Well, we also need to go back to yeah, Ashland and Zedeker because we haven't been there in a while. Well, we had, let's see, the last time we changed them out, it was like right before the harvest of the oranges. And the last time that we got all the calls was right around the harvest of the oranges everybody was seeing so we're talking like almost two months three months now then yeah like february yeah wow okay then yeah we need to go and we have five cameras that are set up right now two down here and three up there or four or three down here and four up there i don't remember i know it's two up there three up there i'm gonna have to start writing that down or get a gps and start uh, i well we can't get signal up there so Oh, that's Danny right. can, yeah. Danny can, but all right. Um, so there Danny, you go. download a GPS app on your phone. <laughs> yeah. And we can start using that baby. Um, uh, but yeah, we got to get these cameras. Um, you never know. We might have something that will change uh, history as we know it. So, okay. So anyways, all right. Um, we got about 26 minutes left, 28 minutes right around there. Um, right what else do we need to talk about? Uh, we have Easter. Obviously, Easter is coming up. So we won't have a show on Easter Sunday. All right. Uh, so we're going to give um, Art Bell, Dark Matter Network, um, a classic. You find him a good one. Um, which one did we give him last time? Well, David, we, Pilates. David Pilates. Yeah. I'll give him, let's see, it only ha- it has to be two hours, though, huh? Go in there and find, I mean, you said there's a ton. There is. You're going to have to go in there and find, I'll, I'll see if I can remember any of the good ones, but, you know, there, we have a lot of good ones. I just don't remember them. It was a long time ago. I, yeah, there is. There, we got some chemtrail ones and. Uh, chemtrail. You know. it, it's, um. I mean, I mean, it was interesting. Well, what about the, what, what about the like, 101102? Um, that's three hours, uh, you know. Unless I, I might be able to like edit it down. Uh, well, we'll t- talk talk know. to Keith and maybe he'll play the straight three hours or maybe I don't know. So like um, Easter because, special because that's another good one, just like the David Pilates one. Oh, it is really. Oh my good. God, Keith, trust me on this one. Three campers up at Cartwright Reservoir. They get abducted by aliens. They actually, the alien left a handprint on the hood of the truck. And we have a picture of and it. And we have pictures of it. They just did a, a motion picture on the story, a documentary, hour, hour and a half long. It's finished, but you, I actually brought in one of the abductors inside my studio and sat him down right here, and we talked to him. We actually had uh, photographs that we showed of the handprint, three fingers, and the thumb coming out. And you guys want to know what it looks like? It looks like the freaking... Now, check this out. I'm going to tell you right now that um, when all this happened in a, in a weekend of three campers, 
you know, two of the campers said, I'm going to hit the hell out of here. They packed up and got out of town Sunday morning. One of the campers was stayed up there. He looked on the, tr uh, the the hood of his truck and saw this handprint, and he called right away. His buddy down here who was already here, he goes, you guys, are you guys messing with me? I found the handprint, and they're going, what are you talking about? What You mean you didn't put it on the hood of my truck? No. He drove down here. They're looking at the handprint. They wash it off. It came back. They washed it off again. It came back. They he got the, a waxer, a motorized waxer, and he washed it, waxed it. The handprint still came back. All right. So this handprint is awesome looking. It looks like wow, like a creature's three fingers with the thumb coming out of the wrist. Yeah, okay, guys? that's what it looks like. And if you go online uh. <laughs> and you pull up alien hands, <laughs> you'll find they're... that the thumb comes out of the wrist. That's what the handprint looks like, you guys. This is awesome. I mean, we, when we did this show live on the air, the people who were following us back then said, I am not going camping ever again. That's right. They were done. Seriously, we had scared the crap out of them. They were done. Um, they actually had the handprint trademarked. And it's it, and it's like it, they're they have a documentary here which actually it's just finished um, with, like two months ago. I actually called the director and I wanted him to be part of the episode that we shot March 9th, but he was doing something else and he mm -hmm. couldn't do it. Um, but um, out of the three campers, one of the campers has passed away since yeah. then of, of stomach cancer, and it happened so quick. Uh, and they're kind of like really blown and, you know, away the by the one that. you have in the stu the one you had in the studio, Adolf. Adolf. He actually gets sores and everything and was telling me he still continues to get abducted. Oh, oh yeah, both of them that are still alive, they still are getting abducted here in Fresno. In town, yeah. All right, it's still constantly happening. Uh, Adolf, they've been following him for so long. As a matter of fact, Adolf said that, and I had to convince him and really push him to this because he was not going back up to where this loca where okay. this happened. He said, I am, no, you're not taking me. I finally talked to him into it. He said, okay, I will take you up to the spot. Sweet. It's not a campsite. It's up at court right off of a ledge where it all happened. Um, and he said he was going, he, he said, if there's more people going to go, he'll take us up there and then we'll spend the night and let's see what happens. That's also the spot where that weekend where they showed up, they saw some lights and they saw, okay, I, I swear you guys, I'm not messing with you guys, but they saw mm -hmm. a bed of um, like an altar that was made and there was a dead deer in this altar. And this dead deer and altar was overlooking a cliff and as they were looking over the cliff, they saw these lights coming towards them. We all pretty much said the same thing that we think the Bigfoots were leaving an offering for their gods or their alien friends. That's what it looked like to them. And it freaked them out. And that's only part of the story, you guys. I mean, it's like, oh my God. <laughs> Watch this. You know what? We're going to give it to Keith. Keith, I know you're listening. We're going to give you this episode. It is probably going to be right up there with David Polites, and it's going to be off the hook. You guys are going to get scared. I have it on my Facebook. I just loaded it. It took oh, seven hours, oh. and it's on my Facebook right now. Okay. Well, um, we're, we'll keep it hush hush, and we'll and we'll let. Uh, um, I just won't put it on the Paranormal Central side. Yeah. And I won't put it on. You know, I'll just leave it on my Facebook. Yeah. So, so it's for the first time. If you want to listen to it, listen to it on Easter Sunday at five o'clock p.m. Well, I tell you, this is one I listened to it like five times, and I still like. They got that night. They got in there, they're all going to bed, and Adolf got in his little truck, the one that they left the, um, right? They they the left print. the hand, you know, the handprint on, mm -hmm. and he said he was almost asleep, and he felt something like land on the truck, like he, like the, you know the. <laughs> Like something heavy pushed down on the hood, uh -huh. and he and then the door locks popped open, <laughs> 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 and that's all I'm going to tell you, uh, Billy. Uh, man, that right there. I mean, the mental visual thing that you get. Oh, and you know, it happened to him two nights in a row. Right, and uh, it, again, Adolf was here with us in the studio when he was talking to Bodis, and you can you when you hear his voice tell the story he, and you watch his eyes watering and he's very scared yeah i mean and, like and he was crying. nervous he was nervous because yeah. you know he was sitting inside and he wasn't prepared for that but um you can tell by the tone of his voice that he was really scared <laughs> and it's great 
It's great, a uh, great show, guys. It's one of the best that we've done. In fact, I, if you're listening, Adolf, uh, um, he showed up at the at, at the show right. shooting, and I want to thank you for that and everybody. But only thanks, Adolf, for coming out, you know, and repping. But guess what? We're going up to court, right, buddy? And you're going with us. Yeah. I want to get. I don't want to. We'll say bring guns. I, I don't want to yeah. say I want to get abducted, but I want to see some lights. Uh, and you know who else I need to get in here to or get him on the phone is the other Adolf. Um, oh yeah, he's the oh, one. Man. He's the one who told me about the levy north of Fresno. He has seen things. He's actually heard things. This guy has been a, a resident of this area of Sanger for such a long time. This is the type of guy who who knows everyone. Matter of fact, he lives right around close to Snake Road up in Sanger. You know who we got to go see? We got to go see Mr. Crawford and show him the monsters and mysteries. Yeah, I don't we got, know. We got, oh my God, we got no. Mm-hmm. Of course, now you don't have cable out there. So he hasn't uh, seen it. We'll so, get to watch it on his big screen that he so, built. But oh, how, how do, do you have it saved anywhere? No. I have it on here. On okay. All right. That's good. Cause you can plug it into his big screen and we'll see it there. So, all right. I could even make him a DVD. Okay. Then you need to do that because uh, we filmed it on his property on Snake Road, the Monsters and Mysteries. Um, when we were in, being interviewed, that's where we did it uh, in Sanger, just east of Sanger on Snake Road. So home I mean, of La Llorona. Really good job. Yeah, they that, did. Yeah, they know. did. But. Um, they didn't really show the part that... Now, you were telling me something about Mickey Burrow that I didn't hear. You went and, and did something with him the other day. Um, and for all those who don't know, Mickey Burrow... Actually, we had Mickey Burrow in here not so long ago talking about the impressions on the window. Yeah, I'm going to talk about it again. But <laughs> Mickey Burrow... Is uh, is the law enforcement officer who took the you know the the, the DNA and took photographs of the windows? Um, he told Alan that, and he never he didn't tell me this. He, so he opened up to Alan, and um, when I guess when well, go and tell him what he told you, what did he say? Well, he's he's now like a believer in Bigfoot, <laughs> okay. and he wants to go. Right? Oh yeah, we're, we're, we're going to take him. Um, I guess the. You know, nothing you could have told him or I could have told him would would make him believe in a Bigfoot. Right. But looking at the evidence, I mean, this guy is an evidence guy. That's what he does. He collects evidence on dead people and tries to figure out who did it and what it was and how it was done. And the evidence that he was looking at absolutely swayed him over to believing in a Bigfoot. And that's not the back impression of the full body impression. It was the lips the that lips got him. And why? Now, now, tell him, tell us, tell everybody what Mickey told you that the lips pretty much took took it over the top. It was the the details in the lips. What do you mean? The, the little lines. Like, if you're going to hoax that, you wouldn't, like, uh, you wouldn't know to put all the little lines in the lips and make it look like that. I mean... There, there's details that you would not think of to put there to make it that. Oh, you sorry. Know. Oh, my gosh. I hit the back of it. So he, he um, <clears throat> because of his, what he does, he saw these, you know, these lips that look like somebody kissed it with lipstick. Right. And left impressions like that. And then the nose with the, like, the little lines on your skin, you know. <laughs> And a snot rolling down right from where it should be rolling down, down the window. (laughs) And I guess it was from that he was taking pictures of it. And then he went home and put them on his computer. And then he did everything to him. And that's what I was doing for him was lighting. They were lighting me up this way, that way, you know. And I was being a model. (laughs) But only that's what he did is he went home and he he turned it to an x-ray you know, or, or negative. And I mean, he, he did all these different things to it and he knew we couldn't fake it. Actually, nobody could fake that like that. And now he is a straight up wants to go with us now for the first time ever. He wants to go and hang out and go. And, and they keep pushing me. So when are you guys going up, so when are you guys going up yeah. now, you ran into, um, when you were uh, by Lowe's or a veterinarian, t- yeah. t- tell everybody about that story. That's going to come in handy right here. Watch this, people. Man, uh, I went and got some new tires, and it's going to take a little while. So I, there's a guy that works on my power chair, wheelchair, and he's only like a block away. So I walked down there and was telling him what's wrong, and he told me to bring my van. But on the way back, 
I run into this guy nicely dressed. He's driving an expensive car, and he's trying to get in this building. And I really, I wasn't paying attention to him, but he couldn't get in. And then he turned around, and right when he turned around, we were like face to face. He's like, "Hey," and I'm like, "Hey, what's up?" You know, and and he's he sees the Bigfoot on my shirt. <laughs> He's like, you believe in Bigfoot? I'm like, yeah. And then he started telling me he's the veterinarian at this building. He owns the building, that building. And then he owns down the street, like another two blocks, he owns a hospital. Uh, so he has two places. And he was trying to get in the one building. It was a church, and he said it might be his house right now. And, you know, I, don't, I don't know why. But then he gave me a tour of the oldest. He said it was the second oldest building in Clovis. Really? Yeah, a business building. Okay. The second oldest. And then they and there's a couple of girls in there. They had turned it into a uh a, what do they call it? A kennel where you know, you're going out of town and you take your Oh yeah, like, like, a, like, a, like a, a pet hotel. Yeah. Yeah. And uh it, they had ghost stories for every room. You know, this door flies open and this room and some of the rooms. And I got I got to tell you, you know, when you walked in, it was creepy. I mean, they, there was the oldest, the oldest x-ray machine made. The very first x-ray machine was in one of these rooms that the, the first veterinarian that bought that building or had it built had in there. Plus some other machines that were pre-x-ray machines, but they're too big and he didn't want to take them apart. Right. And they're just sitting in there, right? And he's telling me all these ghost things. Then we get outside, and I tell him, I got to go. My tires, they already called me, said, go get my van. The tires are done. And he, he was saying, you know, maybe we could bring our investigation team in, and we can do an investigation, a ghost investigation. I'm like, oh, that's really cool. And then he says, but that's not what I'm all about. <laughs> I am a doctor in biology and you know, besides being a veterinarian, he has degrees in something else, biology or something. And he's interested in Bigfoot. And he says, I could be very valuable to your team. He goes, Bam! I want to go collect evidence. And I, mm. he's seen that after, after we did our introductions and everything, uh -huh. he, re, he recalled that he saw some shows on TV <laughs> And he was saying, man, you know, you guys really, you brought it. You brought it. You brought it. It's good. That looked good. That was good evidence. Really good evidence. You brought a cop in. He said, you guys do it right. And I want to, if it's at all possible, I would like to be part of your team. Absolutely, yes. I'm, I'm saying yes. I mean, that's the kind of guys we want on our team. You imagine having a law enforcement officer, uh, you know, forensic expert Mickey Burl and now we have a veterinarian who has degrees in medicine for animals who probably knows everything you want to know about animals on the team and you imagine if we find something that could be what we think is the smoking gun then we have two personnel of high caliber that can we step back and we tell them alright you guys get over there and analyze and retract and get it all packaged up and let's take it out of here you guys do it we're gonna film you guys doing it yeah. with the gloves with the face mask put it in the baggie let's take it out of here we think we know what it is let's do it um oh my god because you know we had a a a professor at a college did the do did the dna for us but he had to keep quiet because of his profession and he could not tell people what he was doing because <clears throat> as a science teacher it's science that that needs to be brought out in the open and to clarify what we have before he says what it is and um <clears throat> so so he really couldn't do what we needed him for him for to do on this on this DNA stuff but if we have a veterinarian who is not afraid to tell people what he did how he did it what he thinks it is what it's not 
Plus, uh, Mickey Burl standing right next to him saying, I back up everything he just said. Well, I mean, you got Mickey <clears throat> that can collect the evidence and not contaminate it. Right. And not pollute it and not mess it up. Right. And then you have a doctor who's <laughs> not, not just a veterinarian doctor. I mean, he's he's like a PhD in animal husbandry oh, and all that stuff. God! Right? So <clears throat> he knows how to you know look at the evidence and mm -hmm. and figure out what it is or isn't you know and then and both of them like uh mickey and danny have these like bazillion dollar cameras mm -hmm. that can take like oof, and they you know. you know they can document all this as we're yeah. going along with uh you know just with freaking danny gopro on his head that's all we need really but yeah. um yeah you know what we're getting our shit together on this side all right people are hating us because we're doing it because we're us. doing it right and uh, sooner or later <clears throat> we're going to get the stuff that's going to prove without a reasonable doubt because we're getting our asses up there and we're camping in the middle of nowhere we're getting dirty we're getting wet um and you know this is what we do we're not out here in front of these computers 24 7 pulling stories from other people's websites that's not what we do i have never ever ever done that ever in my life all right because the stories are coming to us uh from credible people uh, we, we're getting phone calls on our 24-hour hotline i was uh, arguing with a forest ranger yesterday yeah they had a setup at the big hat days <laughs> and they had three forest rangers one of them you know he was like seven Feet eight or yeah. something like that. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, not really, but he was a tall guy. Right. And then they had a young guy and another one, young guy, and they had these really killer ATVs that had tracks for wheels. Oh, okay. It was like four, right. four tracks. Uh -huh. And I'm like, man, you know, I could use that <laughs> and, for what? Yeah, for what? You know, and I, and I had the vest on, and I just went like that, you know, and I had a big foot on my shirt and went for looking for that. And all three, two of them laughed, and the big, big, the guy in the back, he had like a chin strap on his hat. He's just like a Marine. He's just like. But the other ones are laughing, like, ha ha, yeah, funny. I go, I could take that off road, but all my buddies are hiking, and I can't hike. I have to stay, you know, pretty much down on the road or at the camp. I could take that up. He goes, no, that has to stay on the road. I was like, that's built for off road. Like, what about if I make it electric, you know? What if I get an electric wheelchair thing and, you know, four-wheel drive it? And then I could go off the road and go hiking with my buddies and go on up the hill. He goes, nope, it has to stay on the road. I go, you're telling me that, that the handicapped guy, you're going to tell me the handicapped guy can't go up that? You know, I can't take off up the hill? He's like, I don't know what to tell you. Huh. And they were freaking out on the Bigfoot, though. You know, they were just looking at me like, like incredible. Like, what? This dude, my. <laughs> yeah, I bet you, uh, <clears throat> I bet you one of those guys in there in the back of their heads were probably going, oh, I better shut up. Oh, I better shut up. Um, well, I, I'm going to find out. I think that there's a way for handicapped people to go hiking off the road. You know, I'm almost positive of it. I've been told twice now, like, the lady that, when it was on my birthday and we were going out to get the permits for finding Bigfoot at the spot and we want she wanted to see where we're gonna go so we we, we took her over there she four-wheel drive all the way back in there and then told me I was telling her yeah man I'm gonna go buy a, a electric ATV and it's for handicapped people so that they could go off hiking you know off trail she goes you can't take it off the road I was like what you know, I was told by the people that didn't make it that it is exempt because you're handicapped and I have a handicap everything, you mm -hmm. know. They said, you're exempt, but only, nope, take it out, can't take it off the road. Man. I'll, I'm going to get it on the ballot, man. Everybody <laughs> vote. Need a flying machine. Yeah. That's what you need. <laughs> a drone to sit on and Ooh, just. Let's do it. 300-pound drone. <laughs> Crash. Okay. So, all right, we got a couple more minutes left. Um, I think we uh, pretty much, uh, what I think? There, yeah, 3.30. What do you Actually, he's, he's uh, talking to us. Close, maybe. 3.30, okay. So, yeah, we got about three minutes and 30 seconds left. 
Um, I think we pretty much said everything we wanted to say. Obviously, you know, there's so much more out there to talk about. Um, Two minutes and 30 seconds. I, I, I don't know, you know. Um, Hopefully next week we yeah. have Devil's... Cap, um, uh, evil Known. Evil Known. <laughs> Devil's Bigfoot? <laughs> Close <laughs> enough. Um, yeah, Tammy Thomas, you know, I can't wait to get her on the phone. She can go ahead and pretty much... And in her own voice, tell you exactly what happened. If you haven't watched the episode, I would suggest you go do so. Monsters and Mysteries, I believe it's still on demand Mm -hmm. on Comcast. Um, But uh, Monsters and Mysteries on the Destination America channel. And it's called Bigfoot Wars. uh, We're actually on that episode, including Tammy Thomas on the Evil Gnome out of Portoville, California. So we hope you go out there and take a listen and watch that. That way, you, when you come back next week and you hear it from her, you know exactly what the, what she's talking about and how it all goes down. So, you know, they had a um, your wife posted oh, no. up this picture of like an old dark forest or the path mm-hmm. running through it, mm-hmm. and there was all oh man, I, I think there was like. 600 or something 600 comments <laughs> on this thing what did it say what, what was the quote it says have you ever seen anything in the forest um that is weird or how, how does it say it? spooky or yeah the, like out of the ordinary out of the ordinary you know? and there you know i read all of them it took me a little while man too bad we couldn't run that one video but uh anyways the these there was some real outlandish, like weird stories, and then there was the stupid ones. You know, you saw me, but uh, <laughs> but they these these two ladies okay, in New we got one minute to close, so break it up. These two ladies right. in New Hampshire. That's 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 to the music. You got one minute. Are you sure? To start the music, yeah. One minute to close. No, it says one minute to close. Yeah. Two minutes to roll. Close thing. <laughs> See, we're not Emerald. We don't know how much more time we got. He said early is okay. Oh, okay. But these ladies drove up on a town of little you people with big heads dressed in um, with skins. Gonzalez. Right. But then they couldn't find it again. Ooh. And, oh, man, I want to go find that so, place. Let's okay. go. Okay, we'll go. To the little people. The little people place. So, all right, you know, we're out of here. Uh, my name is Jeffrey Gonzalez, and that's Alan Thomas, and you have been watching and listening to Paranormal Central. I appreciate you being here. And uh, we'll see you next week. If you see something crazy, make sure you give us a call on the 24-hour hotline at 559-287-8367. Go to our website, paranormalcentral.net, and or go to artbell.com, Dark Matter Network, they will be playing the show once again, over again, I believe, tonight and tomorrow. So take a listen. You might have missed something. Good night, guys. Yeah, I'm recording. Paranormal maybe. Central <laughs> with Jeffrey Gonzalez See and Alan Thomas. Broadcasting worldwide at paranormalcentral.net and on artbell.com. Stay tuned for next time. Remember to keep your eyes to the skies. And we hope you witness something you cannot explain. <laughs>